Good morning, everybody. My name's uh, Michael Long, and um, thank you for joining me. Um, today, I want to talk about government corruption and um, stage terror. But before I go into stage terror, let me just talk about the government corruption today, because it's um, it's extremely bad and very daunting. Um, I like to, uh, in, in conclusion to that, you know, the federal government, the Congress on the federal level, sitting there, you have the Republicans sitting there going, well, you know, we got to make cuts or we're going to go into defaults, right? We got to make all these cuts and, and stop the spending and this and that. But then the only thing that they can cut on, and they're not willing to Democrat, they're not willing to com they're compromise on Democrats, and I can understand that, because they don't want to sell their... A lot of the real conservatives don't want to, the very few that are it, there is that exist, don't want to send their sell their values down the drain. But the majority of them, they want to compromise in this and that, and it's ridiculous. But, you know, if you want to compromise and all that, being that the Democrats want it, have been wanting to increase spending, and this is a bill that's already been passed, already been signed into law by President Obama, and what there is is there's spending. Huge spending on making sure that insurance providers make sure that abortions and birth control and 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 people that want to go out and make love and have get on go on the birth control that everybody else, including the taxpayers, flip the bill out for them so that they can go out and continue abusing the system and all oh, because it's a it's a woman's right to choose and this and that and the other thing. And quite frankly, I'm a little fed up with that myself. Because it's taxpayers, it's the hard working American taxpayers that have got to go out and bail these people out. Now now, if you wanted to make all these cuts and at the same time compromise with the Democrats, hey, I got a plan that would that would make it simple, lovable for both sides to compromise on. And and even though we shouldn't compromise, if you want to compromise, this is what you do. The Democrats say, okay, you want to raise the debt ceiling? Okay, well, we're not going to forget about the people who want to have an abortion and, and their condescensions and this and that and the other thing. Let them suffer. Because obviously they can defend themselves. So that's one area where we can cut and make them pay, right? And, and instead, let's provide services for people with autism, Down syndrome, and other mental and physical disabilities. By doing contracts and working with the free market instead of having full control over doing that. Okay? And you can, and you can certainly spend a lot of money on... Combating illegal immigration, putting a triple A wall up, putting up surveillance, which many conservatives argue have have really been needed to be done for a very long time. And the second thing, if you want to make cuts, well, then it's very simple: abolish the Federal Reserve, uh, abolish, get out of NATO, NAFTA, GATT, the United Nations. Let's just. Destroy the New World Order's proposal for the United States into joining the, United, the New World Order. Let's get rid of that dream and get it out of the way. Let's abolish the Dream Act on the state levels. Let's get and let's stop thinking about the Dream Act, right? And instead, and, and, and let's abolish the Federal Reserve, the Department of Education, the Department of Energy, the Department of Labor, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Department of and all these other thousands, at least 99% of the government bureaucracies, let's get rid of them. And, and, and let's cut down on the abuses of Medicaid, Medicare, and CHIPS. And um, perhaps we can make trillions of dollars of cuts in the long run. We'll have, a, we'll have a limited and severely restricted government. And at the same time, we'll have services for people with autism and Down syndrome and any spending increases that we make but we have to be if we're going to make cuts let's get let's make real cuts let's abolish the federal reserves let's crack let's do all those things and if we're going to make if we're going to increase spending let's spend the money on real things like providing services for people with autism and down syndrome combating illegal immigration stepping up worksite enforcement providing services for the elder, the old, people mental disabilities, the people with physical disabilities, people that are blind and disadvantaged. 
You know, let's spend money on real things and let's cut spending on real things. That's a common sense solution and I'm sure both sides would be willing to compromise if a real or true compromise were to, have, were, were to occur, which never happened. Okay, instead, what it is, is, oh, we're, what we've got is, oh, that's, we're going to create, the, having, what we got was having Congress to get rid of their power in exchange for this 13-men council. Six Republicans, six Democrats, and the President Obama, the magical president, and, and, and whoever the future president is going to be, and they're going to be the ones originating the bills, and you got all this abortion <laughs> And tax increases, and they're going to have the power to put ram through legislation to curtail the gun owners, the libertarians, conservatives. And it wasn't long ago, back in 2008, when they came out with the MIAC report under George W. Bush, warning to get rid of conservatives, libertarians, gun owners, okay, returning veterans. I mean, this is sick. And of course, now I want to talk about stage terror because it's linked to this whole problem. Because people have submitted to the system for a very long time. Okay, stage terror. Think about it. 9-11 was an inside job, okay? And um, if, in case you don't know how it happened, the, we, the U.S. federal government, pay them hijackers trillions of dollars to hijack those planes to crash them into the Twin Towers. Then we took a missile and blew up parts of the Pentagon and blamed it on a plane that was flying overhead. Okay? And then we used all that as a pretext to be in the affairs of Iraq and the Middle East. We've used similar methods during the Vietnam War. For instance, the Gulf of Tonkin was staged. It never happened. It never occurred. We just had a bunch of gunships out there taking fire and then, oops that was used to get us into the Vietnam War then we had similar staged terror attacks we've had the Oklahoma terror attack which was a staged event the, the, the underwear bomber another staged attack by the US federal government to implement the naked body scanners and the T, in the TSA airports so that people would submit to the system and instead of and, and say well if you don't well, it's to keep us safe in this and that and the other thing, as opposed to saying, well, is it constitutional? Is it legitimate? Is it really legal? Are they allowed to do this? And obviously not. And there are those that will stand up for tyranny, and at the end of the day, they're going to get it. Because they're the first ones that are going to get killed if the government gets its way. Followed by the people who don't want tyranny, who don't want this proposed new world order and all this garbage. Okay, so staged terror is a really major and big threat. And it's called false flag terror or otherwise known as staged terror. And it's something that where the federal U.S. federal government or other international governments from other countries, France, Belgium, Mexico, whatever, right, staged terror attacks. Basically, the globalists who have hijacked most of Western Europe and most of North America, have controlled most of the United States through manipulation, they'll go out, the black ops parts of the federal government, and stage the terror attacks, and oh my God, look what the gun owners did. Look what the jihadists did. Look what the Muslims, extre Muslims did, the Muslim extremists, the gun owners, the libertarians, this group, that group. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, it gets old and it's, it's garbage. Anyways, and I just hope that sooner or later we can resolve this issue, either by voting for Ron Paul in the Republican primaries and then voting for him again in the 2012 election and then voting for the Constitution Party or real libertarian conservatives to dominate in the Congress and really start making some changes. Or maybe we can elect a Constitution Party candidate, whoever that's going to be, for president should Ron Paul and Gary Johnson drop out. And um, get a get a hold. Let's start having grassroots events. Let's be more diplomatic. Um, and that's all I can say. And if we have to use guns, it should be only on the basis that the police that came to take them do not have any warrants or any legitimate reason to take them. And that's the only time that 
violence and gun battles should ever be used. Other than that, we shouldn't use gun violence at all, and we should use diplomacy and diplomacy and start voting for people who matter. Any, and, and stop depending on the government. Like get Instead of welfare, get out and get a job and work. Okay? Um, and um, my name's Michael Long, and um, thank you for joining me, and I appreciate it. And God be with you.